back to another episode of Jack of All Trades. Today's the day we're finally going to get rid of that factory radiator inside the Buick that has uh, not been able to cool anything down since we moved down here to Florida. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to do a quick unboxing of a cold case radiator that I have. Uh, I'm going to paint it. We're going to do a comparison of how it looks uh, compared to the Harrison and then we're going to install it and I'm going to show you what little adaptations you have to do. Uh, from what I understand, there's not a whole lot and then we're going to run it and we're going to see how it cools compared to how the current factory radiator cools and then we might actually try a radiator additive to it to see if that helps even any more uh, just to play around with that. So anyway, uh, check this out. We're going to go ahead and, and do the unboxing now. All right, so we got this radiator for the A-Body uh, Buick GS and uh, I'll get you the part number on the screen there specifically for this this application. Looks like they give you some stickers. A little, maybe like a little fridge magnet type thing. Stickers. Well, this is super light. Watch out for these uh, copper copper staples. I'm gonna like a suitcase. All right, looks like it has. Uh, Cold case written on there. Something I was interested in was these, was these welds. I know some people have had some complaints about the welds. Uh, they are pretty thick. One reason I picked this radiator out specifically was due to its shape and its price, of course. I think most people consider the price in there uh, with that. I wanted to have rounded tanks. I did not care for the new radiators out that had the, the square ones. I wanted to make sure that my inlet was cocked properly here uh, and everything was, you know, as factory as possible. Uh, it's kind of hard to do without getting into the six and $700 range. I know this, this radiator was a little under 400. But anyway, uh, it came packaged pretty well. Uh, I don't see any damage. Uh, there's a couple fins that are a little a little bent on the back side. Nothing I can't fix with a little screwdriver. Uh, so it's not perfect, but it's in pretty good shape. So what I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to uh, degrease uh, the tanks with some alcohol. I'm going to wipe them down, and then I'm going to spray paint them with. Uh, this uh, barbecue grill rust-oleum high heat paint uh, that way it'll look it'll look the factory color at least and it'll have that that protection so I'm gonna go ahead and spray paint it now and then uh, we'll move on to removing the the factory one and uh, go from there all right so it looks like it painted up nicely with that paint kind of have a real flat black look to it got a little bit of overspray from the not taping it completely off but uh, looks pretty good. Uh, so what we're going to do now is we're going to go ahead and just uh, we're going to pull out the Harrison and uninstall it, bring it out here. I want to do a comparison of the size difference and the outlets and show you uh, all the differences there. And then, uh, of course, it's going to do better. Uh, that's going to be a give me, but I'll also take it out. We'll run it. I'll show you the temperatures and then we'll play around with maybe a, a little radiator additive and see how that how that works if that if the gimmick or not you know it might cool better but um i think mainly is it's going to be the fit um the fit and uh if there's any modification that needs to be done to get it to work that's going to be the the major points here for this and then you know of course we'll just show that it, that it works it, it definitely will cool better than the factory it's got to um but anyway let's go ahead and uninstall the harrison and then we'll bring it over here towards this cold case one 
and see what the differences are. All right, so simple enough, we'll just start out with uh, dumping out this radiator and uninstalling it. Uh, it has just pure water in it right now, so there won't need, be any need to flush it out. Uh, I'll fill it back up with distilled water at first, and we'll run it and see how the temps work. And uh, after that, I'm going to try this uh, uh, Rizlon super coolant. It's supposed to get it down even even cooler. Uh, it says here the claims are 219 degrees with water only, and if you add super coolant to it, it's uh, 189 degrees top. So. Uh, we'll just have a little bit of fun with that and see if it does anything after this. But let's go ahead and get into the, uh, the uninstall here. inch line wrench for the uh, transmission coolant. All right, here we go. Here's the the look at the two, the Harrison's in front, the factory one, and then the coal case is in the back. They uh, they're lined up perfectly on the left, and so on the right, you can see that it is just a titch longer, not by much. Some differences that I noticed right away is the coolant overflow. The nipple points straight back on the Harrison and it's, it points kind of down, butt back. But it, that is different there. And also a big notice is the transmission coolant line. The bottom ones are identical in height. However, there's about I would say three inches difference between the factory inlet and the coal case inlet. It's much higher. So I'm going to have to see how that, that matches up whenever we get those fitted. Definitely tell the aluminum one is thicker. Looks almost twice as thick. We'll have to see how that fits in there. Uh, the diameter of the uh, inlet and outlet is the same. I don't ever use the drain nipple at the bottom. I just dump uh, the lower hose, but um, they're identical. All right, so we're, there we have it. Let's go ahead and get this installed. And uh, I think we have to change the isolators, but we'll check that out and see, okay? All right, we're gonna go ahead and do the installation now. So uh, some concerns right now are gonna be the isolators at the bottom. I believe they have to be moved or at least one of them has to be moved. We're gonna go ahead and dry fit the radiator here now and see how those set up. And then additionally, the upper mount here for the transmission cooling system. Uh, I believe we could just bend it a little bit. It does have plenty of room, luckily. Uh, so I think we'll be able to bend it into place. I don't think that'll be an issue, but we're gonna dry fit it and see how those bottom isolators work out and uh, go from there. So as you can see, that bottom isolator right there, it needs to be moved out just a touch to get it in line. So uh, from what I've read, all you have to do is pull the isolator out, trim off the, uh, the little nubs on the bottom, the locator nubs, and then move it over uh, to fit. And then that should take care of that issue. This one on this side, they lined up just right. No 
issues with that side. So uh, it should just be one. We'll go ahead and give that a try. All right, so both uh, both isolators there are now where they need to be lined up pretty good. And just to give you a little idea of the the room, the clearance we got here, probably a quarter of an inch on the right on the driver's side, and plenty of room on the passenger side, a couple inches at least. All right, let's get these. Uh, these lines set up all right so I show you what I did so I got the transmission lines hooked up I had to bend the top one up a little bit it had plenty of room uh, a few inches the bottom one um, I had to make sure it was coming in straight so you're gonna have to look at it from all different angles to make sure it's coming in straight uh, also take your time keep in mind you're threading steel into aluminum uh, what I did is I shoved a, a piece of bar stock here in the front with uh, some towels wrapped around the bottom of it so that I could put pressure on the bottom here without it moving. Uh, that allowed me to, to put the, the right amount of pressure in there to thread it in. So keep that in mind, that bottom one is not as easy as you would think. Actually, the top one was pretty easy. All right, so we have it in. We're gonna fit the top plate on and then we're gonna start filling with water. All right, well, there we have it, final fit. Uh, looks pretty good. I would say um, that looks a lot like factory. You don't have the huge gap anymore. Um, I actually might paint this aluminum, okay? Because it's not supposed to look like that. It's supposed to be dark. So there's no gap there now, though. And everything looks pretty good. I would say it's a good fit. All right, let's get it filled up and we'll test it out. All right, there it is. It's all installed. Looks great. Uh, the system has been filled with distilled water, just straight water. Uh, it's been burped out, so it's ready to go. Uh, so some real quick words of advice on the installation. The bottom connector was actually pretty hard for the transmission. Just go slow with it. You're uh, screwing steel into aluminum. You don't want to strip it out. Just take your time. Uh, what I ended up doing was I screwed it in where I thought it would would be good and then I kicked the engine over started it and it was leaking a little bit of transmission fluid so I turned it off tightened it a little bit more I did that a couple times until I got to where I needed to be uh, so anyway uh, today's a perfect day to test it it's 93 degrees outside uh, so interestingly enough the last video I did I did some pulls on that uh, on the engine to seat the piston rings and actually found out later that my uh, my kick down cable for my transmission wasn't even hooked up so those pulls were pretty weak so I'm actually gonna do uh, as a treat I'm gonna do some more pulls uh, with a fix this time to show you we're gonna go check the heat out on this uh, see see if it cools properly and where it's at so let's go ahead and get on the road and we'll test it out all right so it's been about 20 minutes uh, I've been driving around in this heat uh, the car is doing really good right now so sitting still in traffic <laughs> 90 degrees and my oil pressure is about 15 uh, what it used to be was I would sit at about 215 and my my oil PSI as the engine got heat soaked would get all the way down to like 10, 10 PSI at uh, at my 750 rpm idle so uh, it's doing really good uh, considering what it was I think it actually it, it cools pretty well with just water so Anyway, I was gonna test out an additive. I'll probably do that in another video. 
but for right now let's go ahead and get a get a couple good pulls in just for a treat all right I can say that upgrade was a uh, definitely a big plus so I have a 180 degree thermostat uh, during cruising there I would get right up to about 186 188 on cruising sitting at a long light would be like 195 so definitely under control uh, oil pressures looked good so uh, that's great uh, I'm happy I'm happy that that's finally done and uh, we can move on to the next thing because uh, as you can see here I'm drenched uh, it's hard to drive in Florida with as hot as it is, so I'm going to get the AC hooked up next, and uh, we'll just move on to the next stuff. So anyway, uh, I hope you learned something here. Uh, maybe if you were on the fence about getting this radiator, uh, you, you can get it now if you, if you decided that that's what you like. Uh, at right about $400, it seemed like a pretty good deal for an aluminum radiator that had rounded tanks, and uh, it looks good. It fits in with the car. It doesn't stand out. Uh, those welds that I had concerned about uh, initially, they blended right in once I painted it. So overall, it's a good purchase, good upgrade, and I'm glad I did it. Hope you enjoyed this video. Hit that like and subscribe if you want to follow along with the rest of the updates on this car. And take care. Bye-bye.